I have the Alien King file here that I'm messing with. This is a supporting video for blend shapes. So what happens if you have clone files that don't have blend shapes on them? Some of the heads don't have them. Some of the eyebrows don't have them. You need to make your own blend shape. So this is a little bit of a preview and demonstration of how you can use the shape keys to make blend shapes for your filters, Lens Studio or Spark AR, but I'll be showing Spark AR in this, to create the blend shapes that you're missing, that you want to create that custom effect that you're looking for, right? So I'm gonna hop in here. I have the Alien King and I, I have a few demonstrations to show you. So let's say you have a head shape like this, right? So this is not the normal head that everyone has because it has a custom mouth like this, right? So what you need to do for um, for a head like this, you're gonna notice that you might not have any shape keys. These shape keys are all custom made. I made these um, to show you that you have to create your own for some of them, but they're not actually that difficult. So if I wanted to create a custom blend shape, what I would do is I would click on, let's say the head, and I would hit the plus. Actually, I'm going to duplicate this real quick so I can demonstrate. So I'm going to duplicate it. So see how I have a duplicated one? And I'm going to hide the original so I have only this new duplicated one. And then I'm going to take away everything because yours is probably going to look like this. So first thing we need to do is create a basis shape key. So let's just hit plus. And then this is now the default position that it's going to sit in. So don't ever edit this one. Then from here, we're going to hit plus again. And now we have our first shape key. So make sure that this one is selected. You can see it's highlighted here. And then we're going to name this into what we want it to do. So maybe this is going to be for when I'm doing a jaw open or a mouth open. And then what we'll do is we'll go into edit mode and we'll grab a particular point. So maybe I'll grab the chin here at the bottom and I'm going to turn on this right here ears might be off. This is proportional editing. And I'm going to demonstrate what it does with and without this. So if I turn this off, which is what you don't want, you want it on. And I hit the letter G and then the letter Z. You see it just pulls this single point out of the chin, right? And this doesn't do anything for us. Okay. Let me turn this on real quick as well. It's just you can follow along with my key presses over here. So if I turn the proportional editing on and then I hit G and then Z, you can see it moves a bigger bulk area based on this little circle surrounding the point. Okay, so I'm going to go into a front view real quick and I'm going to hit G and then Z. And then let's say I scroll out. Scrolling will grab a larger area to proportionally edit. So if I go like this, you can see it's pulling a huge amount of, of space in the face. That's not really what we want either. So we're going to want to find the right amount where it looks like the mouth is opening but not too much. So maybe something like this right around here. And then you can go through and you can pull all the different points that you feel might best fit a mouth open action. So maybe I pull a little bit over here. Maybe I pull a little bit over here. And then now I have a mouth open. Okay. And then following this, I will go back into object mode. Oh, object mode. Select the mouth. And you can see I have a bunch of custom ones I made here as well that I'll show you in a second. But I'm going to duplicate the mouth again, just like how I did the head, and hide the original mouth and clear these all out except for the basis. And then when I go back to our duplicated head, I'm going to open up the mouth by changing this value here from 0 to 1. So now I can see what it looks like with the mouth open. I can go to the mouth the teeth itself, switch into edit mode find a point that I can pull from. So maybe I'll pull like, I don't know, somewhere in this bottom center. And let's go into front view and switch this into wireframe by hitting Z and then wireframe. And I can see that maybe this point in, in here might be a little better. Yeah, this is more centered to the jaw, the bottom jaw. Okay. And then I'll switch back into material preview so I can see things. And then I'll pull the GZ down for this guy until it kind of opens up that mouth a little better. But you can see it's pulling the top a little bit too much for what I kind of want. 
So in this case scenario, this proportional editing way would not be how I do it. I would instead go to, let's see, the way I would do this one is I would select all of these. So while in edit mode, I would get a bunch of vertices in this space. So let's grab a few of these, this one, 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 this one. And then I'm going to hit control L or you can go select, select linked. And then you can see it's grabbing everything in here and the ones it's missing is underneath. So it's missing all of these and then I hit control L or select and linked. And I'm going to manually move them down. So for what I want to do, I'm going to create a new basis, key one, go back into edit mode, go G and Z. And let's max this out real quick. So this has to be on one. If you're trying to edit it, edit any of your objects and you're like, it's not moving. I hit G, Z, it's not moving like this. It's probably because your shape key is on zero. So it's forcing it to stay in the basis. So put this on one and then you can see the changes. So now if I go like here, I can get a little closer to what I'm trying to actually achieve. And I can select this center point like I was trying to do earlier. And we'll center the screen out so I can see if that's center, it is. Now I'll GZ that and adjust the proportions until it's pretty much in the mouth. So that looks better. Now if I go back into material preview, you can see that it has a mouth open. It's kind of stretching the top teeth a little. We can go and fix that if we want to. So let's say I grab all of these. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me select all, but it's not necessary because I'm just going to grab the teeth real quick. Select all of these for length and then GZ these up a little. Let's try to get this proportion a little smaller. Hmm, okay, the way, the way I might do the teeth for this example is I'll probably grab a point by holding shift and just grabbing any random point on each teeth because the proportional editing will pretty much fix it to what I want to do anyway. And then just kind of just pull these teeth up a little like that. Maybe that's a little cooler. So then when the mouth opens, I'll have a little bit cooler of like this jaw opening effect like that. So that's kind of cool. So now when you're in Spark AR or Lens Studio and you have the blend shape take over and do an effect with your jaw tracking, it'll move this open and this open together as you do a jaw open. And then you can just adjust this as you best see fit for whatever project you're working on, whatever you're looking to do. So if you're trying to do custom eyebrows, you would do the same thing. You would grab, let's say the eyebrow over here. So you're trying to get the eyebrow to raise when, with your eyes. You would switch into, you would actually go click on these, click on shape key. So you have a basis, click another one. So you have a key, go into edit mode. And then I would hit one of these vertices, hit control L for grabbing all the linked vertices. And then I would just go GZ and pull it up a little. And you can see it's not doing anything because the shape key is not a one. There we go. And then I'll just pull this up a little bit like that. And maybe turn off the proportional for this. And then, yeah, that's probably, that's probably good. And now you can see what happens when you raise that eyebrow. So maybe you want it to be a little more realistic to the eye. Maybe it'll rotate a little. So if I put this on one, maybe it'll do a little bit of a rotation on maybe the Y axis. So maybe we just give it a little bit of a rotation like that for an eye raise. That's kind of dramatic. Let's see. Maybe just a very little subtle lift like that. Maybe the position changes as well. We could maybe move it along the X a little. And then let's see if that, that kind of looks. That's all right. So you would mess with these values here to create that, that eyebrow effect you're looking for. So this one would be eyebrow right, eyebrow right raise, right? And then when you're calling for that in Spark AR or Lens Studio, you would know that this eyebrow is the eyebrow right raise blend shape. And when you change that value, it's going to do this from zero to one. And you just do the same thing for the opposite eyebrow, right? So that's how you would make all these custom blend shapes for your project that might not have blend shapes on the pieces already, right? Yeah, so it's really not that complicated, but now I'll show you some of the examples of 
what you can do. So for this Alien King project, I have, it had no blend shapes. So I was like, okay, let's do some fun, cool stuff with it. So for example, what I did was a little classic jaw open. So when you open the mouth, it does that. And then I have little bits of shifting to the left and right with jaw left. So if the jaw goes to the left, it will move the jaw left a little bit like this together in unison. And then if the jaw goes right, it will do that. Let me show you left and then right. And then you can do other interesting things. I am trying to learn how to implement uh, tapping. So if you tap the screen, maybe it does something a little bit different. And I'm that's what I have for this jaw monster. So I'm going to have it. So when you tap the screen, it goes into this really crazy, large, monstrous effect like that, which still has the ability to move left and right with jaw tracking. Just this crazy, obnoxious, like, whoa, yeah. But that is how that's how you would uh that's how you would adjust things to make your blend shapes do all the custom effects that you're trying to create. So as you go through it, you can actually create very, very custom, unique, unique uh, effects for your clone that other clones might not have. Like uh, maybe you have the, the eyes blink in different directions vertically instead of horizontally, or or you have your accessories do things when you do things. Maybe we separate the these, these little diamonds off the helmet and then when you blink they move or rotate or something cool like that. Or something will sparkle when you um, open your mouth, you know? This is how you would create all those different blend shapes for your custom clone that doesn't have blend shape support.